Today we are going to find out if Feather is still one of the best decks in the format. You are watching Brazil Robot MTG, I'm Gabriel. Subscribe to the channel for the greatest, jankiest and most powerful historic brawl decks in the world. Feather is a 3 mana 3 4 angel in Boros colors that has flying and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery that targets a creature we control, we exile that card and then get it back at the beginning of the next end step. The decklist base is from I'm Not Fine, updated with cards from the recent sets. The strategy is simple. Play Feather and be ready to back it up with a protection spell. Because opponents will know they need to destroy it and will probably mulligan for a removal spell. With Feather on the board, then we play this sub game where we try to be aggressive by pumping Feather, cantripping our spells, recovering all of them at the end of the turn, but also we need to keep mana up to defend it at all time. The amount of resources we will find and the amount of resources we won't ever lose are the difference makers and the reason we win with this deck. We never run out of action while our opponents waste their resources. Let's go to the deck. Section 1. Pump spells and cantrips. This entire section is full with cheap instants that increase power and toughness. Some of them are key by also giving feather trample, so we make sure we're getting for damage. Many of them draws us cards in the process so we can keep finding more and better spells. All these spells are the heart and soul of the deck. Section 2. Protection Spells Protecting Feather from removal is a must do, so we pack a great amount of spells that give protection from colors, indestructible, hexproof and so on. Always leaving mana up always being careful. Section 3. My favorite other creatures. Clever Lumimancer on turn 1 can be a Wincon on its own. Dragon's Rage Channeler can become a big flyer but also filters our draws. Dreadhor Arcanist allows us to use any instant or sorcery that ends up in the graveyard, perhaps thanks to DRC. Kill Finn gets plus 3 plus 0 with every spell we cast. Insane. Young Pyromancer to go wide with tokens if we need to. And Gutter's Knife for the extra shock every time we cast a spell. Section 4. More more creatures. Here we have a bunch of creatures that work really well commanded by Feather. There's more protection creatures, aggressive creatures like a Dance of Vanguard, Magda for the treasure tokens, creatures that grow like 10th District Legionnaire, and more go white dorks like Cranko. Section 5 Removal. The best removal spells in the colors and Reckless Rage plus Go for Blood for some removal spells that Feather can get back to our hand. Section 6 Other spells. Curse of Silence to delay an opposing commander, Manathite to catch our opponents off guard and Showdown of the Skulls, probably the most powerful card in the deck. If we play this in the mid game, we are very favored to win the game. Last, Section 7, the Rocks. A bunch of mana rocks, Mox Amber on turn 3 alongside Feather and a 1 mana protection spell might be our best opener. Strike It Rich can get the job done as well. So that's the deck, that's the deal, now let's go to the games! What is up everyone? Welcome back one more time, you know the deal, we play Historic Brawl and today we are playing with Feather the Redeemed, Boros List, a very strong deck, one of the best decks in the formats, in the format and we are trying to see if it's still one of the best. Feather the Redeemed versus Yarok, the Desecrated, nice battle, nice battle. This is our opening hand, opponent goes first. And it looks actually really, really good. Turn 1, Sentinel. Turn 2... Well, maybe Sudden Breakthrough to make the treasure. We draw a Gutter Snipe. One of my favorite cards in the deck. So another Wing Kong for the deck. This deck obviously wins with Feather. And you need Feather to actually go off. But there are some sneaky good cards in the deck. So opponent has a very, very, very good... Turn 1 and turn 2 play, so they are ramping like crazy. The only thing that they don't have going for them is the colors of mana, but I guess we attack, we're not planning on defending with Esper Sentinel and just pass with Sudden Breakthrough. Try to make the treasure, get to 4 mana in our turn 3, ugh, Solemn Simulacrum. Alright, so opponent is doing their thing, we can let this go. Yeah, I don't know. Yarok is a very tough matchup for the deck. But we have the tools to cope with this situation. Gutter Snipe, Angel Fire Ignition. We need a protection spell for Feather. We always need to work with a protection spell because the deck is very dependent on Feather. Opponent fetches for a Snow Cover Swamp. 
Playing annoyingly slow is our opponent. And an overgrown tomb, so they are missing blue. Okay, so let's do this thing. Create a treasure. Clifftop retreat is great. We actually needed the second. We actually needed the second white source. And the question is here, do we go for feather? Blindly go for feather and make them have the removal spell. If I had the um, protection spell, maybe a two mana protection spell, I wouldn't play feather. But given the fact that we don't have any protection spell whatsoever, I guess we have to run feather. Hope that there is no removal and then work from there. We can kill them pretty fast with the correct sequence of cards. Angel fire ignition is pretty good. Homestead courage as well. We can play that twice and then ah, well, no removal, but an ether channel ether channeler to bounce our feather. But that's okay because that means that. They don't have another answer to Feather. Because if they had an, a permanent answer to Feather, they would probably have already used it. Still no protection spell. Maybe we are supposed to mulligan four hands with a protection spell in your opener, but as per Sentinel turn, turn one and the other cards, I don't think we had to ship that. Here comes Feather again. Opponent found the pathway, so they have perfect mana. We could play the Homestead Courage on Esper Sentinel, but we need to use our treasure for that, and I don't think we need to do it. The reason is that if we put a counter on Esper Sentinel, then the tax is bigger. Yarok hits the battlefield. Remember when Arena used to have cool animations? Alright. Ooh, there is this. There it is. Fight us one is perfect. Fight us one is perfect. So now we are pretty confident with this matchup because we can protect any two creatures that we want. So, I'm thinking here going gutter snipe. That's a way in which we set up a little bit more. We have the protection spell for Feather. We have the Angel Fire Ignition, so we play Gutter Snipe, and then plan on protecting the... Um, we could also Angel Fire Ignition something attack, but I think Gutter Snipe here is very, very powerful. Because our protection spell Fight Us One essentially means we can protect Gutter Snipe and Feather every turn, every single turn. So we will ping them, attack them on the air, and this is a very, very fast clock that we have. So we could use the Homestead Courage to start the attacks and increase the amount of damage that we do. If we have to use the Fight as One, then we will spend our treasure. No, no problem with the mana at, the, uh, at this time. So we hit them for two from the Gutter Snipe and then we attack them for four in the air, Vigilance. We grow Feather. Feather now can block more efficiently. If we use Fight as one on Feather, then we can take down Yarok. I think that's the way to go. And thanks to Yarok, we are going to get back the Homestead Courage. Yeah, we're doing it. That's the way that you want to set up with Feather. An opponent has a nice setup on their own with the Arok, but they need something pretty good here. Like they need a reverse rebuke, but I feel like even through a reverse rebuke we can work and we can redeploy our things. So the key part with Feather is getting to this situation where you have available mana for playing your spells in your turn but also hold up mana for protection. And we are in that instance of the game. Opponent deciding if they want to use Castle Garden Brick Mana for a Kogla. All right. Okay, okay, okay. That's 
That's not an issue at all, because now we will go fight as one. Let them target both of our creatures. Target. And then we can choose the two modes and protect the Sentinel and protect the Feather. Interesting choice. They went for the Sentinel. They didn't go for Feather. Or for Gutter Snipe in that... For that, um, for that matter. But now Kogla is down. They spent their entire turn, s so many resources and mana, and we just used a one mana spell to deal with their thing. So this is where Feather is so powerful because your hand never decreases its size and we can just go off. So now we will ping them for two. Grow Feather. Angel Fire Ignition. Ping them for two. Yeah. Grow Feather. And we have to hold Fight as One for their turn. Attack them for seven in the air with Lifelink. Nothing else we can do, really. Just attack with a very big creature. I'm trying to think if we have lethal, because we don't, because we can make it a 8, 9, plus ping 2, so we were short to damage, I believe. But that's alright, we get back our cards, and this is where Feather is insane, totally, totally insane. Opponent needs a Wrath, opponent needs a Massive Bounce spell. But even through that, I feel like we are in a very, very good position to close this game. Well, they're still playing, so they might have something. Opponent taps and taps, taps again. Makes mana for Castle Garenbrick, so a big creature. Could be what? Tatiova. Okay, so going for the... They are going for the um, land value, the double land value, thanks to Yarok. They shock themselves. Here they are going to win two life, but we can make so much damage. Can make them s make so much damage in the air that I don't. There's not an amount of life that they can win here that prevent them for from dying and they go for an attack and scoop yep wow feather is still really really good here we are for another round with feather the redeem versus the lina wild mage wow what a great great matchup a reminder to subscribe to this channel hit the like share some comments in the comment section i want you to comment on what is your favorite magic the gathering art I, I really like talking about magic art because it's one of the greatest things that this game has. So what is your greatest or most loved magic art? Leave a comment if you would like to discuss that. And maybe we can make a deck that, it's only, that it only uses the best art in arena cards. Just uh, to go full jank mode. We are approaching 1,000 subscribers, and I hope that you can subscribe to the channel because the first 1,000 subscribers are going to have a very special place in my heart, in the heart of this channel. And you know, people that are subscribers and frequent commenters on this channel are often getting hooked up with nice value, nice booster packs. I have so many magic cards, and I want you to have them in your decks. Because I don't want to keep uh, hoarding magic cards. Uh, so, for example, we're I'm trying to help Thea with her Orvar deck. Going to send her a nice supply of cards for that deck, just because she's awesome and she's um, a very, very good friend of this channel. So, I'm just really happy to have people like her around. We have Rabbit, we have Rabbit, Luca, Simone many 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 people that frequently comment on this section on the comment section of these videos and we are building a very nice community all right opponents on the lina they are trying to determine if they can play the lina 
give her haste and attack through a Leonin light scribe. I feel like they are trying to figure that out. Unless they are missing a land drop. Because if they have the four mana. Alright. Wow, they don't. Okay, so they got stuck in three. And now? Should we play Feather? Or should we keep... I feel like I don't have to play Feather for now. I feel like they have like... The chance to remove the Oning Life Scribe with maybe a, a removal here. So I could definitely leave up mana. Try to use one of our spells to maybe find the fifth land next turn. Because Feather and two untap things is what we want to. to untap mana is what we want to protect Feather. Alright, they go for the boots. So they are going to go through our defenses. To draw a card. Showdown of the Skulls might be the difference maker in this game. Because that card... Is bonkers. Especially if Feather is on the battlefield. Alright. Opponent draws. Trying to find the fourth land. We might have to fire something off to draw the fifth land. I really don't want to spend. Could use God's Willing to Scry. Could use... Shelter to draw a card. Ooh, maybe we don't have to use any of these. Of course, we, we are cruising, finding naturally the fifth land from the top. And this is where Feather comes in. And this is where Feather is really difficult to deal with. We don't need to attack yet. Don't need to attack yet. Cold Steel Heart, okay. Yeah, opponent not finding the fourth land is... Yeah, they are having mana troubles. Okay, and then now... I could use Shelter, but... There's no one mana. There's no one mana deal for instant speed. But I'm going to just chill out and not overextend. Because they could kill our Leonid Light Scribe, something like that. So, no need to tap down. But here... Given that we have a God's Willing and we did not find the sixth land, I go for Shouldan of the Skulls. Trying to find a land from the top of our deck. And do Shouldan, Shouldan things. We'd like to see a land. Ooh. Oh, okay. So this is even more perfect than we even thought. Because now we can play the Signet from the... We gave them the the window to use a shock on Leonin Life Scribe. But I think like the value here is too much to pass. Land an Arcane Signet from the top of our deck. And then for the next couple of turns, every play that we make deals a plus one plus one counter to any creature. So we're going to create a very big board, Hidden Archive. So opponent developing their mana, but never finding the fourth red source hurt them. Definitely hurt them. I feel like even through their fourth land, we were going to be okay, given what we have in hand and what we had in the top of our deck. So we play this from exile before we lose it. Only Thopter, nice blocker for the plundering barbarian. That maybe even allows us to start attacking with Feather. Let's put the counter on this Light Scribe. I want to make it a f bigger threat that we can even attack with him. Also, you can we can use the kick in the door to give plus one, plus one counter again on this Light Scribe. And then another one from the Skulls. So we, maybe we can start growing Feather. The team grows thanks to the Light Scribe, and we venture into the dungeon soon. Let's get the sweet, sweet Scry 1 value. Hushbringer. Well, one thing that the Lina does is use a lot of Enter the Battlefield triggers, because that's what they want to copy with the Lina, because they lose the creature from the Lina at the end of the combat step, but Hushbringer denies that. So, we could also use Ryle to cantrip. Grow the team. Let's start building up the Ornithopter as well, so it can be a good blocker for the Barbarian. 
We draw the Hushbringer. I feel like I want to run the Barbarian and just hold up one mana for God's Willing. I'm going to do it after attacks. Yup. Boom, down to 13, and Hushbringer is brutal for a Delina deck. Yeah, let's put the counter there. And yes, I knew it, I knew it. Hushbringer is brutal versus Delina decks. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue to play with Feather the Redeem versus Goshin Tai. Wow, super, super tough matchup. We go first. A reminder for you to like the video if you're enjoying the content and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We are reaching 1,000 subs and from there we are going for a hundred thousand in no time. We have the new set coming down to Arena on February 7th. The same day or the day after I'm going on a small vacation to my home country. So I won't be actually playing with the new commanders at the beginning of the season. I will have some things prepared nevertheless, but I will still have pre-recorded content. So I won't be missing any, any of our, our videos, but yeah, direction. All will be one hitting the arena on February 2nd, February 7th. And looking like a very nice, looking like a very nice set. And we have a feather, a very strong feather play. Because now we have shelter. This is exactly where we want to be. Strike it reach on turn one is one of the things that we want to see all the time. Every time. It's a Tessin champion. And we are going to smash them. Could use, ah, uh, well... I wasn't supposed to use shelter there because it was the end of a step, but yeah, another victory. That's things that happened with this deck. So yeah, the new set all will be one. Looking really, really nice. We're going to be able to play with new Elish Norn, Atraxa. There's the so many new Planeswalkers and a new sword, the Sword of Forge and Frontier, the Gruul, the Gruul Sword. Nice, clever Lumi Monster in turn one. Wow, what a hand. Can start with clever Lumi Monster. We are playing versus the first liver, accompanied by Karuga. So first liver value. I'm not expecting actual slivers in this deck. Now in turn two, we can go DRC and then we can play the curse. Get some sweet value from DRC, surveilling. We don't need another planes. Let's start filling the graveyard with cards. Maybe we can make Dragon's Rage Channeler into a 3-3 flyer. And we are going to curse them. Curse you, opponent. Now first lever is delayed. Showdown of the Skulls looking really nice in our hand. And as I mentioned in the first game, I might have to run Feather. We have to be efficient with our mana. No ha no protection spell in our hand. So we don't need to wait. And then if they kill her, or if they kill Feather, we can go for Showdown. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, I like to go Showdown of the Skulls when I can make my land drop from Showdown. I feel like here we could go Adant of Vanguard and then grow the team, make a treasure, smack them for a bit, Surveil with DRC, so a lot of value steal. Tenth district, just tenth district legion here, to the yard. Trying to grow the DRC. Down to sixteen, and then we go Avanto, Avanto Vanguard, which is very good if they are they are planning on untapping and wrathing the board. To still have a threat that we can grow with Shodan of the Skulls. Silent Breakthrough also goes back to our hand, so that was another reason to maybe go for that line. Yeah, they need a board wipe here, but even through that, we can still work pretty efficiently. 
Well, conclusion is that Feather is still one of the best in the format, and surprisingly, we are not matched up all the time with top, the top decks. Like you saw, we played versus the Lina, and now we're playing versus the first Lever, but we are not going through the tougher, tougher guys. We also played versus Goshin Tai, and is our opponent salt roping us? Ugh! All right, looks like we are not playing Magic anymore. Someone got disconnected. <laughs> first liver players doing first liver players things. All right, so I'm going to skip this part now. Okay, so opponent consuming their timers. We're going to untap and plan on hit them with a brick to the face. Showdown. Surveil. Invigorated rampage. Don't think I need that. Let's try to find protection spells, maybe. Fable Passage, we can play Fable Passage, crack Fable Passage. Get a red source, go to attacks, attack with the team. Build to smash the feather. Well, we could have gone for Sudden Breakthrough plus Build to Smash, probably, because Breakthrough makes the treasure. Okay, so down to four. We get back the Build to Smash, pass to their turn. And probably now we are going to have to consume one more timer, so I will skip this part now. And... Boom! Another victory for Feather! This will be our last round playing with the Feather that we did. We are playing versus Ambergris. Wow. Ambergris using Izzet colors. Remember our Remember our Ambergris Poros deck that just wants to discard your entire hand into your graveyard for Dragon's Approach and to cheat Dragons into play thanks to Thanks to Dragon's Approach. If you did not see that deck going off, and you can find in our Videos list the Ambergris deck, and you're going to have so much fun because it's hilarious. It's a ridiculous deck. I feel I feel like it's the best deck that I played last year. Like that deck made me made me laugh. Like I have probably not laughed in five years, and it was really really ridiculous. It was all also the process of understanding how the deck worked, which did not. Which I did not get there until turn t uh, round two, and then when I discover how the deck worked, it was ridiculous. Uh, well, I play strike it reach on turn one, but now I don't have a good turn two play, so I feel like I just have to play the cliff top retreat and pass. Yeah, maybe I had to play the retreat on turn one and then strike it reach turn two. I don't. It doesn't look like it was going to be any helpful, but... Yep. We have a take up the shield. We need another white source. Here comes Ambergris. Are they going to discard the entire hand? That would be... Uh, they don't. That would be hilarious. If they if they were on the dragon Dragon's Approach deck, I would just look at them play it and have fun. With it. Ooh. Well, here comes Feather. Again, no protection for Feather right now, but they are a red deck. And a red deck probably is trying to make damage to Feather, and we can buff her toughness for, for plus one plus one. So I feel like I still can protect Feather with what we have in hand. It's a risk. It's certainly a risk, because if they are playing blue. And they could have interaction in blue. Like a bounce spell or... But they don't have blue mana. No islands for the opponent. So obviously Feather being a 4 toughness creature is very hard for them. They, If they would have obliterate or lava coil, something like that, then I was planning on giving that plus... Plus one to the toughness and avoid 
losing feather. All right, so they will transform Ambergris into a 4-3. But nothing else? So they have a good attack here, presumably. And if they attack, I don't think I'm going to block. Well, okay. They do nothing. Okay, Red Heart Arcanist. Now we have to take up the shield up, and this is where the game completely goes to our favor. We can protect Feather for days. So, trying to look for card advantage, and we currently don't have ways to really draw, but maybe venturing to the dungeons and growing Feather is a... Opponent didn't want to go with that. All right, so we win another game with Feather. So ladies and gentlemen, we reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the madness of Feather. And if you did, consider subscribing to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, leaving a like, comment on that art thing. What is your favorite art from a Magic the Gathering card? We will see each other on a future video.